Peppy, the Cat, and Five Little Pumpkins by James Dean. Five little pumpkins sitting on a gate. The first one said, Oh my, it's getting late. The second one said, There are witches in the air. Look, he's a Frankenstein pumpkin. The third one said, But we don't care. The fourth one said, Let's run and run and run. And the fifth one said, I'm ready for some fun. Oh, oh, went the wind and out went the lights. Uh-oh, where are the five little pumpkins and Pete the cat? And the five little pumpkins rolled out of sight. Look, Pete's a robot. Well, happy Halloween and trick or treat. D. End. The Bernstein Bears Learn to Share by Stan and Jan Bernstein with Mike Bernstein. I'm Sister Bear. I'm here to say that what I like to do is play. I run, I skip, I jump, I climb. I have myself a great old time. Who's the one I play with best, pray, and sing with more than the rest? Just turn the page and you will see my favorite playmate, little me. It's lots of fun to play, you see. I asked my dolls to come to tea. I have my games all to myself and every toy on each big shelf. But Mama says almost every day, take time to share, take time to pray. But there are times I do not care. My things are mine. They aren't to share. I take each turn on my red truck. I do not share my pull toy duck. I say inside, it's all mine. But then I wonder, is that kind? Is this the way I should be? A bear that only thinks of me? Then I know it's time to share my playthings with my fellow bear. Once is fun, but it is true that many games are best with two. When I am sure I need another, I go look for my big brother. We play checkers, beanbags, pick up sticks, spend time with brother, I get my kicks. Look, here come Liz and Bob and Clem. Now we can share with all of them. I ride Bob's bike, 
He rides my trike. It's great. We share and share alike. So sharing is fun. It's good to do, and lots of times it's easy too. And if you share, it's also true. Fellow bear will share with you. We share our time when we're together. We run, we hide, skip stones, whatever. We share our books. We trade our cards. We visit one another's yards. Now we're more than three or four. We're five, six, seven, and lots more. Here come Millie, Mike, and Nat. Anna Mae has bought her cat. Here comes Fred with Snuff, his terrier. This way, friends, the more the merrier. This way, Cubs, come on, come all. We choose up sides to play baseball. A game of ball is lots of fun. We pitch, we bat, look. Too tall, hit a big home run. It works out well if you can share your playthings with your fellow bear. The ball is mine. It's Freddy's bat. Lizzie bought a glove and hat. She'll share her hat, but not her glove. Uh oh! Fred gives her a little shove. We all saw that little shove. It was not showing God's care and love. Soon there are lots of arguments. Of course, I put in my two cents. This is not the way. It's not right. We should all be sharing, not in a fight. And so, to keep the peace between us, all our friends go home. Please think of Jesus. He would want us to share and show we love our fellow bear. Meanwhile, friends, it's still today, and there is still some time to play. So turn the page, and you will see. Brother, will you play with me? The end. Sharing is caring. Flynn saves the day with Thomas and friends, by Reverend W. Audrey, and illustrated by Richard Courtney. Percy rolls down the track. Uh oh, Percy smells smoke. Oh no. Percy sees a fire. Thomas is in trouble. Who will save him? Clickety clack, clickety clack. Percy finds Flynn. Flynn is a fire engine. Flynn is fast. Flynn is fearless. Flynn will save Thomas. Chuff, chuff, clang, clang. The engines hurry to help. Smoke swirls, flames flash. The engines work together. Percy clears the track, and.
Thomas is free. Flynn fights the fire. Whoosh goes the water. The flames flicker. They fizz. They fade. The fire is out. Thomas is safe. Good job, Flynn. Thank you, Percy. The end. Are you my mother? By P. D. Esman. A mother bird sat on her egg. The egg jumped. Oh, oh! Said the mother bird, "My baby will be here. He will want to eat. I must get something for my baby bird to eat." She said, "I will be back." So away she went. The egg jumped. It jumped and jumped and jumped. Out came the baby bird. Where is my mother? She said. <gasps> oh, he looked for her. Huh? Huh? He looked up. He did not see her. He looked down. He could not see her. I will go and look for her," he said. So away he went. Down out of the tree he went. Down, down, down. It was a long way down. Boop. The baby bird could not fly. He could not fly, but he could walk. Now I will go and find my mother," he said. He did not know what his mother looked like. He went right by her, but he did not see her. Hmm. He came to a kitten. "Are you my mother?" he said to the kitten. The kitten just looked and looked. It did not say a thing. The kitten was not his mother, so he went on. Then he came to a hen. "Are you my mother?" he said to the hen. "No," said the hen. Cluck cluck. The kitten was not his mother. Meow. The hen was not his mother. Cluck cluck. So the baby bird went on. "I have to find my mother," he said. "But where?" Where is she? Where could she be? Then he came to a dog. "Are you my mother?" he said to the dog. "I am not your mother. I am a dog," said the dog. Woof woof. The kitten was not his mother. The hen was not his mother, and the dog was not his mother. So the baby bird went on. Now he came to a cow. "Are you my mother?" he said to the cow. "How could I be your mother?" said the cow. "I'm a cow." Woo! The kitten and the hen were not his mother, and the dog and the cow were not his mother. Did he have a mother? I did have a mother," said the baby bird. "I know I did. I have to find her. I will, and I will." Now the baby bird did not walk. He ran. Then he saw a car. Could that old thing be his mother? No, it could not. The baby bird did not stop. He ran on and on. Now he looked away, way down. He saw a boat. There she is," said the baby bird. 
He called to the boat, but the boat did not stop. The boat went on. He looked way, way up. He saw a big plane. Here I am, mother! He called out, but the plane did not stop. The plane went on. Just then, the baby bird saw a big thing. This must be his mother. There she is, he said. There is my mother. He ran right up to it. Mother, mother, here I am, mother, he said to the big thing. But the big thing just said, Snort! Snort! Oh, you are not my mother, said the baby bird. You are a snort. I have to get out of here fast. But the baby bird could not get away. The snort went up. It went way, way up. And up, up, up went the baby bird. But now, where was the snort going? Oh no! Oh, oh, oh! What is the snort going to do to me? Get me out of here! I can't fly! Help! Just then, the snort came to a stop. Where am I? said the baby bird. I want to go to my home! I want to go to my mother! Then something happened. The snort put that baby bird right back in the tree. The baby bird was home. Phew, I'm safe at last. Just then, the mother bird came back to the tree. Do you know who I am? She said to her baby. Yes, I know who you are, said the baby bird. You are not a kitten. Meow. You are not a hen. Quack, quack. You are not a dog. Woof, woof. You are not a cow. Woo. You are not a boat. Boat. Or a plane. Yeah. Or a snort. Snort. You are a bird and you are my mother. The end. Fred and Ted Go Camping by Peter Estman. Fred and Ted were friends. They liked to go camping in the woods. One day, they packed their cars. They, they were going camping. Look, they have a canoe and they're having their bags. They drove to the woods. Fred took many things. Oh my gosh, there's so many things in his car. Ted took a few things. There's just two or three items in his car. They parked their cars and walked into the woods. Fred liked this spot. Ted liked it too. Fred had a hard time with his tent, but Ted had an easy time with his tent. Pop! That night, Fred was awake. And Ted was asleep. The next morning, Ted woke up early. But Fred woke up late. <sighs> they took their boat to the lake. Fred took the heavy end. And Ted took the light end. They put the boat in the water. Ted stayed dry. 
but Fred got oh wet. They fished. Fred used a pole, and Ted used a net. Look, they're trying to fish. Ted got ten little fish, but Fred got one big fish. Oh, wow! It's pink and it's so big. Splash! The boat tipped over. All the little fish jumped out. Fred and Ted swam away from the big fish. Ted swam fast. Fred swam faster. Ted ran fast. Fred ran faster. Now Ted was hungry, but Fred was hungrier. Then they heard a little bird. Look up in a tree. Look down at your feet, and soon you will find something to eat," sang the letter the little bird. Fred looked up. He saw nothing. Ted looked down. He saw something. Berries. Fred looked up again. Bunk! Something hit Fred on his head. They even found some crab apples. They went bank back to camp. Ted ran with the berries. Fred walked with the apples and nuts. They cooked the apples and the nuts in a pan on fire. They ate it all up. Ted ate slowly. Fred ate quickly. But what about the berries? They saved the berries for last. Yummy. The end. Hope they had a fun camping trip. Llama Llama learns to swim. By Anna Dudney. Llama Llama and his friends play in Luna Giraffe's backyard. Luna shows everyone her brand new swimsuit. I have an idea, she says. Let's go to the beach. Have you guys been to the beach before? A beach day sounds like fun," says Nellie Neal. "We can go bodyboarding. Gilroy, you slid, and Luna are excited, but Llama Llama isn't so sure. You look nervous, Llama Llama," says Nellie. "Don't you want to go to the beach?" Well, says Llama, I don't know if I like the beach, but it could be fun, right? It's gonna be a blast, says Nellie. That night, Llama Llama talks to Mama Llama. He tells her he is worried about going to the beach. I'm afraid to go into the water. He says, "Mama Llama puts her arm around Llama's shoulder. Is that because you don't know how to swim?" She asks. Llama nods. "It's okay, honey," says Mama. Llama, not knowing how to swim is nothing to be ashamed of. Would you like me to give you a swimming lesson? Yes! Exclaims Llama Llama.
The next day, Llama and Mama go to Eleanor Elephant's house. She has a pool. Llama dips a foot in the water. Not bad, right? Asks Mama Llama. Actually, it's pretty nice, says Llama. Mama Llama shows Llama some swimming strokes. Then Mama helps Llama float on the water. Finally, they both hold their breath and dip underwater together. Splash! Llama Llama likes learning to swim. After their lesson, Llama and his mama say goodbye and thank you to Eleanor. As they're leaving, Nelly and Luna walk by. What were you two doing at Eleanor Elephant's house? Luna asks. Llama tells his friends the truth. Mama was giving me a swimming lesson, he admits. I was nervous about going to the beach because I don't know how to swim. We could all use a little practice before hitting the waves, says Nellie. Mama Llama, will you give us a lesson too? Mama Llama agrees. The next day, Llama's friends join him for another swimming lesson. There's even a surprise guest. Grandpa Llama. Llama is confused. Grandpa, what are you doing here? He asks. Your mama told me you were afraid of getting in the water, says Grandpa. Well, so am I. I never learned how to swim. Llama Llama smiles. He can't believe it, but he's glad to have a swim buddy. Who is just as nervous as he is? We'll stick together, kiddo," says Grandpa. Llama Llama and his friends practice different kind of swimming strokes. Luna shows everyone how to dog paddle. <laughs> She kicks her legs, kick kick kick, and paddles her hands underwater. Everyone else gives it a try. Dog paddling is fun, Grandpa says. Llama, we're llama paddling. Grandpa laughs. laughs. By the end of their lesson, Llama Llama and Grandpa Llama swim all the way across the pool. You did it! Everyone cheers. You swim buddies are ready for the beach tomorrow, Nelly says. The next day at the beach, Llama Llama's friends are by his side. Don't worry, says says Nelly. You can do it. Just remember everything you learned at the pool, says Usulig. Usulig. Okay, says Llama. He takes a deep breath. <gasps> Here goes. Splash. Mama wades into the water. It's cold and wet. The sand squishes under his feet. It feels great, but something is missing. His swim buddy. Where's Grandpa? Llama asks. Llama sees his grandpa standing at the shore. He is scared to get in the water. Oh no! Says Llama. I have to help him. There's a lot more water here than there was at the pool. Grandpa says nervously. Llama Llama takes his grandpa's hand. It's okay, says Llama. I'm your swim buddy. Remember, I'll be right by your side. Grandpa nods. You're right, he says. Let's do it, one foot at a time. Llama says as they walk into the water. Hey, this feels pretty nice, says Grandpa. 
especially because we're doing it together, says Llama. Llama Llama and Grandpa Llama float on the water. They toss a beach ball back and forth with Llama's friends. They're having so much fun. And then they go bodyboarding. Everybody ready? Asks Nelly. Here comes the wave. Llama cheers. Woohoo! We're doing it, says Grandpa. Later, Llama Llama and Grandpa Llama visit Mama and Grandma Llama on the beach. I'm really proud of you, says Mama. You faced your fears and got in the water. And now here you are, playing and swimming with everyone. Llama Llama and Grandpa Llama feel both proud. Thanks, Mama, says Llama. I guess you can teach it, old Llama, new tricks, says Grandpa. There's just one problem, says Grandpa Llama. We don't ever want to go home. The end. Llama Llama, I Love You by Anna Judy. Llama Llama, Valentine's, Cupid's Lace and Heart Designs. Make a card for every friend. Someone to give and some to send. Fancy glitter heart for mama. Yummy chocolate heart for llama. Candy, cards, and flowers too. Llama, llama, I love you. Look, this flowers, a card, and a ch heart chocolate box. Do you love chocolates? The end. Llama Llama Red Pajama by Anna Dooney. Llama Llama Red Pajama reads a story with his mama. Mama kisses baby's hair. Mama Llama goes downstairs. Llama Llama, red pajama, feels alone without his mama. Baby Llama wants a drink. Mama's at the kitchen sink. Llama Llama, red pajama, calls down to his llama mama. Mama says she'll be up soon. Baby llama hums a tune. Llama llama, red pajama, waiting, waiting for his mama. Mama isn't coming yet. Baby Llama starts to fret. Llama Llama, red pajama, whimper softly for his mama. Baby Llama starts to moan. Mama Llama hears the phone. Llama Llama, red pajama, listens quiet for his mama. What is Mama Llama doing? 
baby llama starts boo-hooing. Llama llama, red pajama, hollers loudly for his mama. Baby llama stomps and pouts. Baby llama jumps and shouts. Llama llama, red pajama, in the dark without his mama. Eyes wide open, covers drawn. What if mama llama's gone? Llama llama, red pajama, weeping, wailing, for his mama. Will his mama ever come? Mama llama, run, run, run! <gasps> Baby llama, what a tizzy. Sometimes mama's very busy. Please stop all this llama drama. Be patient for your mama. Little llama, don't you know, Mama Llama loves you so. Mama Llama's always near, even if she's not right here. Llama Llama, red pajama, gets two kisses from his mama. Snuggles pillow, soft and deep. Baby Llama goes to sleep. The end. Three cheers for Kid with Gear. Sherry Dusky Rinker and A.G. Ford. One day at the construction yard, five friends are building, working hard. Flatbed drives into the site. Vroom, vroom. Her secret load is strapped down tight. Look, there's a cement truck, and it's red. There's a dump truck, it's red and yellow. There's a dozer, and it's yellow. There's a digger, it's also yellow. And there's a big crane, it's also yellow. The tarp comes off. And there, surprise, the crew cannot believe their eyes. Five trucks stop and turn and stare at the tiny truck that's sitting there. Clean and shiny, all brand new, with lots of cool attachments too. Whoa, what kind of truck are you? with a scoop up her front, and she gives a turn, a twist, and a bend, and waltz off flatbed in one swoop. Beep beep, hello, she says, and greets the group. Wow now, who do we have here? I'm a skid steer, Kid McGear. I'm here to pitch in, in any way, to help you guys get down today. I'm here to work, to have a turn. I want to join the team and learn. I'm the new kid on your crew, so is there something I can do? Kid, we have a huge job here. We have a ton of grounds to clear. I think, kid, you're, you're just too small to be much help around here at all. We have to move out yards of dirt. 
I'm worried that you might get hurt. I saw your trick. That's fancy stuff. But you don't look quite strong enough to jump in here and do your share. Maybe just stay over there. The trucks drive off to clear the land. No problem, guys. I understand. <sighs> I'll help out some other day, Kid says as she turns away. The big trucks go back to working hard, clearing the construction yard. And then... Honk! Suddenly... Kid hears a yelp. Emergency! Come quick! Come help! Screech! Kid stops and spins around, revs and heads right towards the sound. All the trucks start rolling fast, speeding toward the cliff. <gasps> Full blast! But Kid McGear goes turbo burst and so she gets there fast and first working on a steep hillside the trucks began to slip and slide now trapped in trees with mud ugh, and rubble ugh. excavator is in big trouble bulldozer is in trouble too but Kid McGear knows what to do. First, so that she doesn't slip, Kid puts on tracks so she can grip. She stops a moment, takes a look, and quickly grabs her grapple hook. In one smooth and steady swipe, she grabs a load of steel pipe. Support is needed to begin. Kid's power drive slams them in. With pipes all lined up in a row, Kid grabs a chain and gives it a throw. Kid rolls downhill, brave and sure, and wraps each truck so they're secure. Kid's giant scissors Power shears cut tangled limbs. Then her blade clears. Now we need something, says the kid, to help sh make sure that they don't skid. Here, I'll dump this load of sand for traction on this slippery land. Kid rolls into each small space and pushes sand right into place. Then, Kid sees a giant rock. It has bulldozer trapped and blocked. I'll jackhammer this to bits, and with a roar, the bulldozer splits. Crane truck clears away the rubble, lifting each piece without any trouble. Kid, <laughs> the, then excavator coughs. I think my track is, is falling off. Excavator shifts onto his scoop to pull his track out from the goop. Forklift on, lickety split. Kid rolls down and fixes it. Working at full speed, Non-stop, the chains tied to the pipes, up top. Cement mixer, we need your weight. Hit low gear, say strong and straight. Now everybody, pull! The kid shouts. The others rev hard, helping out. Down there, you guys, start up and row. We'll pull and tie to keep control. Soon everyone's back on the level land and can all get back to work 
as planned. I'm so glad you're all okay. And then Kid turns to roll away. But the big trucks start to cheer to show their thanks for Kid McGear. They shout three times, hip hip hooray! Kid McGear just saved the day. Please don't go, kid. We hope you'll stay. Now Kid McGear has joined the crew. Five old friends and someone new. Six friends in the construction yard. Big, small, all working hard. Each one greater than they seem, because they're working as a team. Teamwork makes the dream works. The end. You think it's easy being the Tooth Fairy? By Sherry Bell Rehwald, illustrated by David Slonim. Do you think it's easy being the Tooth Fairy? Well, it's not. It takes skill. It takes dare. Thank goodness I'm here to do the job. Look, they're sleeping. Oh, and it's a little dog. I never, never wear pink flouncing skirts or twinkling glass slippers. That's Cinderella. She does a lot of sitting around the castle, looking pretty. Boring. Me. I'm an action kind of gal. I live for danger, for suspense. Let's get clear on another thing, shall we? I don't rely on elves to help me out. A flying reindeer. Ho ho ho! That's Santa. You know the big ho ho in red, right? Don't get me wrong. He's a great guy, but all that help has made him soft. I'm tough. Check out my muscles. I got these lugging thousands of quarters around every night. Hmm, look at my muscles. And I'm smart. Take my amazing tooth finder. For example, I invented it. Ting, 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 ting. I bet you didn't know what baby teeth come with. Built in home beacon, did you? With my trusty tooth finder, I can easily locate each tooth. Ting, ting, ting. When it's ready to come out. House and plan my entry. Whoo! Good thing I'm athletic. Yay! Believe you me. Every tooth mission brings danger. Usually on four legs. Look, it's a dog. Oh no! What's gonna happen to the tooth fairy? Gerbils want to flatten me. Cats want to swat me, squash me, squeeze and squeeze and even eat me. <gasps> Look, they're cats. Pets really cut into my work schedule, but so do you. Sorry, kiddos, but I've got too many teeth on my schedule to play games with you. So I really need you to follow the rules. Placement of teeth. Do not clutch tooth in a sweaty palm or hide tooth in the pajama pocket. Oh no! Who turned off the lights? I can't see. Wrap tooth in snotty tissue or smelly sock. P. 
pee you. Well, you should also clean blood and spit off the tooth. Place the tooth carefully between lower right hand corner of the pillow so it's easier for me to take the tooth out and sleep soundly. Lie still, make like a toothbrush. Wonderful! This tooth was right where it should have been. And look how clean it is. Emily gets an A plus, and I get another great photo for my scrapbook. Eureka! My tooth finder is going crazy. Ting 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 ting. Six year girl in Huanu, Alaska. Seven year old quintuplets in San Antonio, Texas. Wow. This is going to be a long night. Phew. All done for tonight. Time for some shut eye. But never fear, my dears. I'll be ready to fly the second my tooth finder starts ting ting tinging. And I've got my ears peeled for your pearly whites, meaning your teeth. Look, there's a girl named Maria, Emma, Keisha, and others named Sammy, Gabe, and Travis. The end. Llama Llama, Mad at Mama by Anna Dewdney. Llama Llama, having fun, blocks and puzzles in the sun. Time to shop. It's Saturday. Llama Llama wants to play. First the shopping, then a treat. Mama Llama gets the seat. Llama dreaming in the car. Wake up, wake up. Here we are. Great big building, great big signs, lots of aisles, lots of lines. Llama Llama, out with Mama, shopping at the Shoporama. Yucky music, great big feet, lady smelling, way too sweet. Look at niece standing in line. Llama Llama starts to whine. Clearance sales and discount buys. What is little llama size? Try it on and take it off. Pull and wiggle, itch and cough. Blech. Shirts and jackets, pants and shoes. Does this sweater come in blue? Brand new socks and underwear. <sighs> llama Llama does not care. Cheesy puffs and Odie Crunch. What would Llama like for lunch? Llama Llama doesn't know. But Llama Llama wants to go. Loaf of bread and cream of wheat. Llama Llama wants his treat. It's no fun at Shoporama. Llama Llama mad at Mama. Flying pasta. Spring juice, paper towels, rolling loose, coffee, bread, and chips galore. Shoes and sweaters hit the floor. Crash the cart and smash the signs. No more waiting, no more lines. Out go socks and cheesy puffs. Llama llama, that's enough. Please 
stop fussing, little llama. No more of this llama drama. I think shopping's boring too, but at least I'm here with you. Let's see if we can make this fun and get the llama shopping done. Let's be a team at Shoporama. Llama Llama shops with Mama. Sweep up pasta, mop up juice, wrap up towels, rolling loose, pick up puffs and find the socks, put the shoes back in the box. Push the cart with Mama Llama. Almost done at Shoporama. Time to leave. The shopping's done. No more waiting. Time for fun. Out to parking. Not too far. Where did Mama leave the car? Snap the buckle. Grab the box. Put on brand new shoes and socks. Say goodbye to Shoporama. Llama Llama loves his mama. The end. Llama Llama and the Bully Goat by Anna Dudney. Llama Llama, busy day. Writing, counting, pictures and clay. Roll a pancake, draw the sun. Almost everyone has fun. Time for circle, time for song. Time to clap and sing along. Kitty, rhino, sheep and calf. Llama, Nelly, and giraffe all sing songs in their own way. Moo, blow, ba, and bray. Llama, llama, claps the beat. Gilroy goat just points and bleats. Sheep goes ba, and calf goes moo. Gilroy thinks that's silly too. Aww. Llama Llama likes to sing, but Gilroy laughs at everything. Llama Llama sings out just the same. Gilroy says a not nice name. <gasps> Teacher has some things to say. Calling names is not okay. Being mean is not allowed. Teacher says to stop it now. Time for recess. Go outside. Monkey bars and slippy slides. Nellie's dolly makes a road. Fuzzy llama pulls a load. Kids climb up and kids climb down. Everybody runs around. Nellie's dolly wants to dig. Fuzzy drives a great big rig. Gilroy stands in Fuzzy's way. Gilroy, do you want to play? Gilroy bleats bah, and kicks the dirt. She gets sand on Llama's shirt. Uh oh. Gilroy throws some dirt at Nelly. Ha ha. Nuts are really smelly. Gilroy pushes. Fuzzy falls. Ha ha. Llama plays with dolls. Ha ha. Gilroy snickers, laughs, and kicks. Gilroy tosses toys and sticks. Gilroy stomps on Llama's coat. Gilroy is a... 
woolly goat. Oh no. Gilroy, this is not okay. Stop it or we'll go away. Being bullied is no fun. Walk away and tell someone like the teacher or your parents. Gilroy fusses, frowns and pouts. Gilroy gets a long time out. No! Teacher says, let's try again. Gilroy, can you be a friend? No more kicking, no more names. Time to play a nicer game. Look, Gilroy has to be good. End of recess. Back inside, Gilroy sits by teacher's side. Everybody sings the song, and this time, Gilroy sings along. Gilroy Goat has fun with Llama, but school is over. Here comes Mama. Tomorrow has more games to try. See you then. Friends, wave goodbye. Bye bye. The end. I love Dad with the Very Hungry Caterpillar by Eric Carl. Dad, you are easy to talk to. Look, they're parrots. And you're fun to play with. Look, they're playing with a ball and they're seals. You can be silly. Ooh, ooh, ah, ah, yay! Look, it's a monkey. But you're still cool. Look, it's a polar bear. Even when I'm feeling prickly. Look, it's a porcupine. <laughs> it's a brown one. And I bug you. <laughs> Look, they're ladybugs. You are always there. Look. There's seahorses in the sea. To catch me when I fall. Oh no, the bear is up the tree. Look, the big bear is saving him. That's why I love you, Dad. The Mom, you lift me up. Look, there's a kangaroo. It's the mommy, and this is its baby Joey. And look, it's the little hungry caterpillar. And you hold me close, me close. Look, it's the mommy penguin. And it's the baby penguin. Ooh, you are so wise. Look, it's an owl. Here's the mommy owl, and here's the baby owl. And you never forget me. Look, they're elephants. This is the big elephant, and this is the little elephant. And the hungry caterpillar is on her ear. <laughs> Even when I monkey around. Ooh, ooh, ah, ah, ooh, ooh, ah, ah, yay! Or get snappy. Grr, I'm mad. Look, they're growing crocodiles. Roar. You also show me the way.
and I get lost or need help. Look, there's one, two, three, four, five ducklings and one big duck and the little hungry caterpillar. You help me find my feet. And look, there's the big giraffe with its long neck and the little giraffe with its little long neck. Well, that's why I love you, Mom. The end. Don't Touch My Hair by Sherry Miller. area and this is my hair. Ooh. I love my hair. It's soft and bouncy and it grows up toward the sun like a flower. I love it up or down, styled or wild. I don't care. I just want it to be free. Actually, everyone loves my hair too. When I walk down the street, I hear so many compliments. It's so big. How do you get it so fluffy? I wish I had hair like her. It's great that people love my hair. But some love it so much, they want to touch it. Well, I don't like this. What does it feel like? They're so curious about my hair that they try to touch it without even asking for permission. Ooh, I want to feel. Me too, me too. I get very good at avoiding hands. Uh, e, uh, uh, yeah. I have to start looking for ways to hide my hair. I try blending with the scenery, but I'm quickly spotted. Over no. here! No! I try hiding underwater, but that doesn't last long. Oh, wow, I love your hair. Can I touch it? I escape to the jungle, but the critters just can't keep their hands to themselves. Let me touch. Me fast. No, me, me, me. Ooh, ooh, ah, ah. Even the tallest castle tower, someone is always there, ready and waiting to touch me. My hair. Go. Your hair is fierce. No matter how far I go, it doesn't seem to matter. How do you get it so big? Ooh, fluffy. Finally, I find a place where no one wants to touch my hair. But after a few hours, I get lonely. Well then, I decide to go home. I try my best to ignore the attention, but as the hand sinks into my hair... Wow! It looks so soft! Oh, it is soft! I decide I can't take it anymore. That's it. That's enough. Don't touch my hair. <coughs> this is my hair. It's great that you love it. I love it too. But please, just look and don't touch without my permission. The next time someone wants to touch my hair, they ask, Can I touch your hair? I reply, Not today.
Not okay. Now it feels great to walk down the street without anyone trying to touch my hair. My curls are free, ready to reach for the sun, just like a flower. Some people still ask to touch my hair, but if I say my no, they listen. How are you today? Hello. But if you ask nicely, sometimes I say, "Yes, you can, little girl. Yes, you can." D N. Thank you for watching. Bye. All kinds of friends by Shelley Rotner. And Sheila M. Kelly. There are all kinds of friends. Look, they're hugging. Then too, there's two girls hugging and two boys hugging, and both of them. There's young friends and old friends. New friends and best friends. Look, they're hugging each other. They're talking to each other, and they are wearing helmets, looking like they're going bike riding. Family friends and more friends next door. Look. There are smart friends, funny friends. Look, they're laughing together. Furry friends and feathered friends too. You guys tell me, which one is a furry friend? The cat or the bird? There's small friends and tall friends. Who is small? And who is tall? Friends with different ways to walk, and friends with different ways to talk. Friends with different faces, and families from different places. Look, they're all eating together. And look, they're playing together. They're eating their lunch together too. There are school friends. Look, they're playing with their blocks. They're playing with their toys. They're hugging, and they're playing, and they're reading. After school friends too. Look, they're playing soccer together, and they're swimming together, and they're playing with some construction vehicles, and they're practicing karate. And those two boys are playing with paint. Friends who play sports and all sorts of games like string volleyball. Rock climbing, hand games, and baseball. Friends who like to dress up, and friends who like to pretend. Look, they're dressing up to be fairy princesses, and they're dressing up to be superheroes, and they're pretending to play with dinosaurs and be one of them. Sometimes friends can make you sad, or even mad. But mostly, friends have fun and like to be together. Look, they're eating ice cream, and they're sliding. They're sledding. They're on a tree, and they're jumping up high to the sky. There's good friends, true friends, 
and they're the best friends of all. Look, they're bike riding. They're hugging each other. They're holding their hands. And they're swimming. What kinds of friends do you have? Celebrate all the different kinds of friends in your life. I have a best friend too, you know that. The end. I don't like koala. Words by Sean Farrell. Pictures by Charles Santoso. <sighs>
is for bed. He knows there is nothing worse than koala. Koala is the most terrible, terrible. He has a terrible face and terrible paws and terrible eyes that follow him everywhere, watching and watching. Watching and watching for <gasps> a more terrible, terrible. <clears throat> Gulp. Maybe Koala isn't so terrible after all. Adam makes sure Koala is comfortable. He makes sure he is closer than close. And right before he goes to sleep, he whispers, I love Koala. I don't like Koala. <laughs> D and